from the NATO's invasion of Eastern European countries and African countries. This is the dark history of NATO. Before we start this video, I want to thank my good friend Enigma for helping me with some of the edits in this video. Uh, and you know, check out his channel, it has lots of dark history, uh, it's amazing content. Uh, and he told me a little bit about his journey and you know, I think it's quite admirable. Uh, as well, you can check out my book, still available, uh, with a coupon code that is still available, CIA, from the last video. Uh, and yeah, without further ado, here's the video. Operation Ocean Shield. In 2009, NATO invaded Somalia. But why did they invade Somalia? Well, we have to look at the root cause and go back to 1991. In 1991, the Somalian Navy was disbanded due to the Somalian Civil War. This left Somalia's coast and waters undefended. The result? Opportunistic people like illegal fishermen as well as illegal dumpers. Uh, these illegal fishermen will steal the fish of local Somali fishermen and sell them for their own profit. If so they, are, they were not authorized to fish there. Uh, and they basically stole, well, from statistics, $300 million a year. Uh, as well, um, many, start, many Europeans are dumping in the waters of Somalia. Uh, notably, this Italian organization called, well, you know, I, I can't even pronounce it. Rangheta. Anyways, they were an illegal organization in Italy and, you know, they dumped in Somali waters. Now, the result of all this was the buzz, possibly, of a new phenomenon. The Somalian pirates. Originally, they went and attacked these illegal fisheries, uh, but then expanded their operations. Now, something quite surprising about these Somali fishermen is that they were trained by a particular company. And when you dive deeper, you can find one name. Heart Security. This company trained Somalian fishermen in military training and how to hijack boats, giving these Somali fishermen the ability to do what they are doing. After making Somali pirates a real threat, well, they sold services to protect people from these same Somali fishermen that they trained themselves. But instead of addressing the root causes of the issue, NATO began Operation Ocean Shield, an attempt to destroy the Somalian pirates. The Libyan Agenda In 2011, NATO invaded Libya due to the current civil war and apparently human rights abuses by Muammar Gaddafi. And the result was a bloody bombing of Libya and the, the disposition of Muammar Gaddafi. And many countries after the invasion regretted it uh, because in 2014 it got worse uh, and the political situation didn't stabilize. Now this is just a little bit of backstory about a particular email from Clinton's emails. This email was titled France's client and Gaddafi's gold. And this email concerns um, the conversations about Nicolas Sarkozy, the French president. Um, in fact, it talked about why uh, Nicolas Sarkozy joined the NATO operation against Libya. Uh, and, you know, how what he said to the public was that he was there to protect civilians uh, and for humanitarian reasons. But the reality was that he wasn't there for humanitarian reasons. <sighs> Big surprise. Now, what was his ambitions? Well, first was to acquire Libya's large oil reserve, as well as improving domestic standing. AKA, people didn't really like him anymore, and he thought, maybe if I, maybe if I invade Libya and I get their oil, it's going to improve my rankings. Um, and there's another part that a little bit controversial, some say that's not the reason why, some people say it is the reason why, uh, but I'll tell you guys anyways and you'll decide. Uh, and that is uh, Gaddafi's plan to uh, make a gold-backed Libyan dinar to compete with the French currency called the West African franc. Now this would be very, very catastrophic. Don't, don't take this out of context. Catastrophic. 
catastrophe for France. Red Storm Rising. This was a book by Tom Clancy that possibly predicted the future. Now, this is kind of, I mean, I think it's a coincidence, maybe it's not a coincidence, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of like a strange, funny coincidence I found about, and it's also in relation to the subject. Uh, so it's a sci-fi book, this book by Tom Clancy, and it talks about a potential World War III scenario. Um, and, you know, um, yeah, so it's a sci-fi book. So it wasn't meant to be, you know, a prophecy book or whatever. It was just a sci-fi scenario. So let me tell you a, bit, a little bit about what is the story. You may have read it, you may not have read it, but, you know, I'll give you a simple explanation of it. It starts off in Western Siberia, where Muslim extremists bombed a Soviet uh, oil reserve, uh, which basically crippled the Soviet economy, and they needed to get more oil. And their goal was to get oil from the Persian Gulf. Uh, but the problem was that NATO was in front of them, so they had to destroy NATO and then go get the oil from the Persian Gulf. This is, of course, a huge, you know, huge, you know, very summarized, but. The book was published in 1986, and only one year later, NATO invaded the Persian Gulf. I think it's a funny coincidence. It's not funny coincidence. It's it's a strange coincidence. Uh, is it coincidence? I don't know. Is it prediction? Operation Allied Force. This was one of many invasions of NATO in Eastern Europe. This time in Yugoslavia. Now, we need a little bit of a backstory, and it's quite complicated, so bear with me, I'll make it as simple as possible. In the 1990s, there was this guy called Slobodan Milosevic, and he was quite oppressive, from what I understand, and he led to the break of Yugoslavia in five different uh, parts who wanted separation. The first two parts who separated was countries, not well, now our countries, called Slovenia and Croatia. They got off pretty pretty easy compared to the rest, and you'll see why. And next to want to separate was Bosnia and Herzegovina, and it was brutal. It was it was very brutal. Um, when they tried to separate, you know, uh, Serbia invaded them, and it was it was brutal, a brutal war. But they managed to separate at the end. The last part that we want to separate is Kosovo, and. NATO had to intervene. Uh, same thing with Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, the separation of Kosovo triggered again huge human rights abuses by Serbia, and which led to the NATO peacekeeping operation. Now, the key word is peacekeeping uh, or protecting civilians. But what happened in application didn't look too much like protection, uh, and was more violence than protection. Um, well, in this operation, NATO would bomb military targets uh, to try to end the war. But in reality, they bombed things that weren't military targets. And here are some things that weren't. For example, they bombed 24 bridges out of the 25 bridges. So they bombed every single bridge in the country, except one bridge. As well, they bombed Albanian refugee camps as well as Albanian refugees trying to run away. Um, they bombed houses and apartments that, according to uh, Serbian news, there, was, there weren't any military uh, installments over there. As well, they bombed hospitals. Uh, and as well, the CIA also did something strange. They also redirected a bomb to bomb a Chinese embassy, even though they weren't, they weren't in the war. Uh, and as well, huge damages to the environment. Um, they bombed a petrochemical plant, leading 200-100 meters ton of ethylene dichloride, as well as 200 kilograms of metallic mercury into the Danube River. NATO's private contracts. In the war in Afghanistan, NATO used and increased its usage of PMCs. PMCs meeting me, not meeting, meaning private military company. Now, the controversial part, of course, is that these PMCs did huge human abuses in Afghanistan. Uh, to understand this, we have to go to 
a concept called subcontracting. After um, well, NATO would hire uh, PMCs, they would also hire subcontractors called APSCs. And that means armed private security contractors. And they would basically protect NATO convoys. Uh, they were under a force called the ISAF. Uh, and, you know, basically that, that's the idea. You know, they are private contractors who would protect uh, NATO convoys uh, while they would travel uh, and, you know, do peacekeeping or whatever. Um, and what really happened was very, very different. Now, we have to go to a specific company called Watan Risk Management. They were in an APSC, uh, and they were under the name of a certain man called Mr. Rahula. And he was a local strongman in Afghanistan. And when he got the contract, he used this to his advantage. He was not there for peacekeeping. He was not there to, you know, make everyone happy. He was here for money, and he was to continue his criminal activities even under the watch of NATO. Well, m many things he's done. He has done brutal violence against civilians. Uh, he controlled Highway 1 and asked for extortions for people to pass through. Uh, he destroyed entire villages uh, and is known for oppressing civilians. Well, what was NATO's reaction when they learned that? Well, f first off, the, the Afghan government had banned Watan Risk Management and other companies uh, related with NATO. Well, NATO's reaction was not, you know, oh, you know, they are bad people. They actually tried to convince the Afghan government to let Watan Risk Management to continue its activities in Afghanistan. And the result? Well, they continued. Watan Risk Management continued its oppressive activities in Afghanistan under the approval of NATO. Thank you so much for watching this video on NATO. Uh, and I'm going to, of course, introduce all the wonderful supporters from Kofi. And I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for your support. Al Mihai, Agrabin, Java City Coffee, Riley, Dilly, Elk, Lolol XL2, Tyler, Kyle, HTTP Leah, uh, Kyle again, and Arja Weeks, and last one, Oliver.